Cabot Robert was born in Starkville, Mississippi. He received his BA degree from the University of Mississippi and a degree in law from Washington and Lee University, Virginia. Mr. Robert's vast knowledge in sales and human relations is drawn from a wide background of experience. He has sold insurance and real estate for over 20 years, held sales schools and conducted courses in sales, human engineering, personal development, and management for many of the nation's outstanding companies. The unique ability of Cavett Robert to add people knowledge to product knowledge has earned him the reputation of the number one speaker in America in the field of human engineering and motivation. He has devoted his life to helping people bring their do-how up to their know-how. Helping people to realize that regardless of what they do, first and foremost, they are in the people business. Ladies and gentlemen, Cabot Robert. Thank you, thank you, thank you. You know, I'm going to ask you to do me a favor. Now, this may not be the best talk you ever heard, but I guarantee it's going to be different. Okay. Now, you're not going to make me feel like the Lone Ranger up here. Everybody put your hand up. Come on, please do. Come on, put it up. Okay. Reach over and pat the person on the back next to you. Please do it. Go ahead. Right. Come on, pat me on the back. Pat me on the back. My friends, did you know that less than 3% of the people anywhere in the United States think enough of themselves to do what you're doing today? To come in in a spirit of self-improvement. Just by virtue of the fact that you're here today proves you have the one greatest quality of success. What is it? You want it. You want it. You want it. I'm not going to argue with you, my friends, but this I know to be true. Every individual in this room right now, you possess everything in life that you really want. Are you getting it so fast, you're soon going to have it. Now, wait a minute, wait a minute. Maybe I didn't make myself clear. I did not say you have everything you wish for, dream about, stand by the revolving door of life, wanting to go through on somebody else's push. Oh, no. I said you have everything you really want. Because believe you me, my friends, in this great free enterprise system today, when we have the joy of selection, no one putting any ceiling on our earnings except ourselves. If you have a great desire, a compulsion, that one quality will generate and create all the other qualities necessary for success. But you got to want it. You see, it has a little tragic aspect of it. No one can give it to you. If you have that desire, that's fine. You can be a walking encyclopedia of all the technical knowledge about what you are doing. But if you don't have that compulsion to succeed, that driving force within you, my friend, I'm sorry. It's of no avail. I love the story of the fellow picked up his envelope. He had his paycheck in it. And he had a letter. You are about to receive a substantial raise. Oh, he got all excited. Ran to the telephone, called his wife. Hey, honey, got good news. We can get that new car after all. But he looked to his disappointment, and the check was the same size. He read a little further. It said the raise is to become effective when you do. Now, just by virtue of the fact that you came here today, it shows you want to become effective. Oh, my friend, today there's no trick in getting sales out of a salesperson. You know what the trick is? Ever getting that divine compulsion. The kind of thing that brought you here today, hoping to get an idea from me that I stole from someone else, that they stole from someone else. Oh, how I admire you people for wanting to invest in the greatest investment on the face of this earth, an investment in yourself. When I practice law in New York City, I live right next through Central Park. And Houdini, no, it wasn't Houdini. It was, uh, who was the great fellow that was advisor of Franklin D. Roosevelt? Can someone tell me? Bernard Baruch, right you are. Right you are. He used to feed pigeons every Sunday morning out there. And there were a bunch of us young lawyers. He called us his law hands. And we used to go out and meet with him in the morning. And I remember one day, Milt Schilbach, one of the young lawyers, said, Mr. Baruch, look, You've known all the great men of your times. 
artist, writer, statesman, you have an entree into royalty, if you could just give one little piece of advice, what would it be? Without a moment's hesitation, he said it's so simple, it loses its significance in its simplicity. It is simple but not easy. Simple because it works, if you work. Not easy because it takes effort. He said decide what you want. That's only one tenth of it. And then decide what you're willing to give up in order to get it. Now, friend, if you look back over your life, anything that ever amounted to anything, anything you're proud of, any accolade you ever received, you gave up something in order to get it. There just ain't no such thing as a free meal. Let me give an example. Two and a half years ago, I weighed 220 pounds. I decided that I wanted to reduce 50 pounds. So I started. But very soon I found out I didn't want to reduce 50 pounds as much as I wanted to eat strawberry shortcake and pile of mold. So I failed. Well, one day I was speaking in Kansas City, and I made a dive from the platform. In fact, I broke my cheekbone. I had a heart attack. About a week later, a doctor said to me, Kathy, do you want to live? I said, who's kidding who? Of course I want to live. He says, do you want to live enough to lose 50 pounds? Oh, no, wait. Listen, you ball game. I did not want to lose 50 pounds in order to give up strawberry shortcake, pile of mold, but I did want to live more than I wanted desserts. I mean, you never saw a guy that lost 50 pounds so quickly. I've never put on an ounce, and I never will. Why? Because there is something I want more than I want something else.